Hello, space fans, and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the discovery of the first planet to be found orbiting a main sequence star, the sun-like star known as 51 Pegasi. And this event marked a breakthrough in astronomical research. Now, the very, very first exoplanet of any kind at all ever found was made by Alexander Wolseskan in 1992 around the pulsar PSR 1257. And it is the prototype for a class of planets called hot Jupiters. But this planet, 51 Pegasi b, was the first planet ever found around a star like our Sun and was announced on October 6, 1995, 20 years ago. It's about 50 light years away and located in the constellation Pegasus. Now just think about this for a minute. Only a mere 20 or so years ago we had suspected, but we didn't know for sure, if there were any planets besides those in our solar system out there. Since that landmark discovery, more than 1,900 exoplanets in 1,200 planetary systems have been confirmed. Now, we have discussed exoplanets many, many times on Space Fan News. In fact, it's probably one of the most reported on topics we do here. And most of the new advances in our understanding have come from data from space telescopes like Kepler, Hubble, Spitzer, and later on from projects like TESS. The techniques employed by these space telescopes to help us understand exoplanets usually involve indirect techniques of seeing the planet, like tiny dips in brightness, or by looking at wobbling spectra, or by seeing spikes in microlensing. Now what would be great is if we could see the planets directly, not the transit method, not the radial velocity method, not microlensing, but a novel technique I like to call the Let's look right at the thing method. Well, after 20 years of exoplanet research, there are some instruments making progress to do just that. And the really remarkable thing is, they are based on the ground, giving space telescopes a real run for their money. For example, earlier this year it was announced that the HARPS planet hunting instrument at ESO's La Silla Observatory in Chile have made the first ever spectroscopic detection of some visible light that was reflected off an exoplanet. Now, HARPS stands for High Accuracy Radial Velocity Planet Searcher, but don't let the name fool you. This is a direct measurement from the planet itself, not an inferred measurement of the parent star's motion. Also, just this week at the Extreme Solar Systems 3 conference being held in Hawaii, astronomers using the ground-based Gemini Planetary Imager, or GPI, an extreme adaptive optics imaging polarimeter integral field spectrometer being commissioned now on the Gemini South Telescope in Chile, Whew, try saying that three times, they have directly imaged one, possibly two maybe, active Jupiter-like planets still forming around the star HD 100546. And this is from the ground. Let's take a listen to some of the hangout they had yesterday. It's all under the rubric of extreme exoplanet imaging. So first I'm presenting detections of at least one, possibly two, baby Jupiter-like planets still actively forming surrounded by their natal clouds of gas and dust. This is data obtained with the Gemini Planet Imager as well. And this is in a system we think resembles an infant version of the first directly imaged system of planets discovered using the Gemini North and Keck telescopes on Mauna Kea. We think we may have found an evolutionary precursor to the HR8799 planetary system, a star with similar mass, but far younger, that probes what these kinds of systems may, may have been looking like while the planets were still in assembly. This star is named HD100546. What we're showing here, Hubble Space Telescope, where we see the star being surrounded by a very bright, massive protoplanetary disk. We took additional observations of this system with the Gemini Planet Imager. You know, our observations first recovered this system in the near infrared, and we're able to combine these data with previous data suggest that this candidate planet is embedded in a disk. It actually affects the planet to be. And it's probably just a few times more massive than Jupiter. So it's a bit of a scaled up version of Jupiter, sort of like the outermost H-7799 planets. Additionally, we identify evidence for a second candidate more massive planet in the system at about 14 AU separations, roughly the separation between the Sun and Uranus in our own solar system. And they candidate one at about 14 astronomical units. This roughly spans the range of separations around which we see planets um, orbiting H-8799. And we su suggest this might actually give us a window into understanding 
how the system may have looked like when it was still in the process of forming. And we can get further clues if we analyze these data in more detail. But that's not all. In order now, no, sorry. But that's not all. Astronomers are also commissioning an instrument with the coolest sounding acronym ever, SKEX-AO, which stands for Subaru Telescope Extreme Adaptive Optics Project. SKEX-AO has the ultimate science goal of directly imaging extrasolar planets around stars at a separation corresponding to the diffraction limit of the telescope in the near-infrared. SKEX-AO has a very high-performance coronagraph as well as a series of wavefront control solutions that make optimal use of the angular resolution that an 8-meter telescope has to offer. And finally, as if that wasn't enough, there is SPHERE, Spectro Polarometric High Contrast Exoplanet Research Instrument which is currently being installed on the Very Large Telescope, VLT. Sphere is designed to exploit a clever way of suppressing the comparatively bright starlight that comes from a apparent star that is hiding a potential planet. It turns out that the light emitted naturally by stars, including the sun, is unpolarized, which means that the light waves oscillate randomly all over the place. But when light is reflected by a surface, such as a planet or a dusty disk, the reflected waves are partially polarized, which means that they now oscillate in a very well-defined direction. And Sphere is looking to pick out the polarized signal, not the other stuff. And it's also possible to isolate this using special filters. So there you go, space fans. Move over, space telescopes. Forget all those indirect imaging methods. Radio velocity? Pfft. Transit method? Forget about it. There is an army of ground-based instruments on deck prepared to look directly at the planets themselves. And that is just like downtown. <laughs> Had to bring it in somewhere. And all of this after only 20 years. Happy anniversary, 51 Pegasus IB. Well, that's it for this week, space fans. Thank you all for watching, and as always, keep looking up. Alexander Wolse's scan in 19... <laughs> oh, great, here we go. The very, very first exoplanet of any kind ever found was made by Alexander Wolse. If there were any planets besides ours in the solar system out there, <laughs> in the solar system out there, for example, earlier this year it was announced that the Harps planted hunting machine plant planted hunting machine <laughs> machine <laughs> why did I put that word in there? The Ultimo car. For example, earlier this year it was announced that the Harps planted hunt planted planted hunting instrument. For example, earlier this year it was announced that the Harps planet hunting instrument at <laughs> I said it and <laughs> Astronomers using the ground-based Genemi, Genemi Planetary Imager, Genemi. And finally, as if that wasn't enough, there is Sphere. Spectro Polarimetric, 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 why did I do this one? <laughs>